Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. I'm Shelvis. Uh, today we are presenting a case of a 56-year-old male with abdominal pain came to the ER, ma'am. Mm. In the first primary survey, patient is, uh, in the airway segment, patient is uh, talking in one full sentence. There is no any secretions in the mouth and uh, no any abnormal sounds produced and airway is patent. Breathing wise, patient respiratory rate is 18 per minute, saturation 99% and uh, normal respiration. There is no any use of any accessory muscles. Uh, circulation part, a patient's having uh, BP of 120 by 70 and heart rate of 72 per minute. Peripheral pulses are felt. And coming to disability patients, GCS was uh, E4, B5, M6 bilaterally reacting to light and to mm in size, people size. And uh, then coming to exposure, patient was having uh, 93.8 degree, 98.3 degree Fahrenheit and uh, temp pain score was 7 by 10. Mm -hmm. So at this point, one injection PCM1 um, was given for his pain right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming to the adjuncts to the... Where was the pain? This abdominal time? pain. Where uh, was Diffuse pain? abdominal pain. So 56-year-old no. male patient with diffuse abdominal pain. So what are the causes of abdominal pain? Uh, diffu uh, abdominal pain... Uh, differential diagnosis. Yes, yes. Uh, diverticular, uh, I mean... Uh, there are both Old surgical age, and surgical medical surgical causes. Medical. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, some um, you classify under mm -hmm. surgical and medical cause, um, like uh, constipation. Uh, surgical causes include constipation. Mm -hmm. Then um, some patients can have initially appendicitis also can. Mm -hmm. uh, seen as a diffuse abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. Then uh, other cases yes. like uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm, aneurysmal rupture mm -hmm. can also be seen like diffuse uh, abdominal pain. So, so it, it can be either peritoneal cause or retroperitoneal mm -hmm. cause. Retroperitoneal cause can be uh, uh, as, uh, abdominal aorta dissection can be there. Mm -hmm. Then pancreatitis, pa uh, pancreatitis can be there. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, any ureter calculate yeah, or anything. Calculate These calculate are the retroperitoneal causes. The common causes. In the abdomen, we can uh, divide abdomen into nine quadrants. So, depending on that, where all can say, put is epigastric pain. So, the epigastric pain, it can be pancreatitis, ga acute gastritis, usually most commonly. Mm. Or uh, cholecyst, uh, the right hypochondrium, we can co consider cholecystitis or uh, cholangitis, or if there is any. Uh, uh, lower abdominal pains, we can consider it to be any uh, testicular, uh, inguinal hernias. Yeah, so you, UTI can be UTI there. Can um, be there. Oh, is it a male or female? Male, 56 year old. Male, okay. Male. If it is a female patient? If it's female patient, we can suspect any ovarian torsion. Or mm. And in reproductive age group? Always suspect ectopic, ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy. Uh, then if patient is a known case of atrial fibrillation and all, we need to suspect uh, other organ ischemia. Like it can be a bowel ischemia, mesenteric ischemia, or there can be ischemia to the spleen or kidney. Some other, any organ, there can be ischemia. So that should be suspected. Okay, uh, what are the medical causes of abdomen pain? DK. Oh, DK. Mm. Then? In Porphyria. Porphyria. Then uh, inferior wall MI can cause as a, uh, abdominal pain. Then uh, sometimes lower zone pneumonias can also come with abdominal pain. Okay. Coming after the primary survey was normal and coming to the adjuncts to the primary survey, patient was having uh, pH of 7.44 and uh, bicarb of 27 mm okay. and PCO2 42.1, no any acid base disorder, lactate was 2.2 and potassium was 4.2, mm, okay. uh, which is all normal. And uh, coming to the secondary survey, patient is a Patient is a known case of, uh, patient was diagnosed with uh, pseudomyxoma peritonea with appendicular mass lesion in 2019 mm -hmm. and he was status uh, procedure was done, surgical procedure was of right hemicolectomy plus omentectomy plus splenectomy plus cholecystectomy plus peritonectomy was done in mm -hmm. uh, 2019 for the same peritonea, pseudomyxoma peritonea with appendicular mass lesion for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And uh, patient uh, 
was on regular follow up with regular cts were taken ma'am right now patient uh, like uh, the events leading to the present complaint were patient had complaints of ab- diffuse abdominal pain which was uh, uh, continuous in nature mm-hmm. and uh, which was for the last two days it was their pain mm-hmm. ma'am and the character of the pain was uh, dull aching kind of pain ma'am and the pain was radiating even to the flanks of bilateral flanks it was radiating and it was being relieved on taking oral pain medication mm-hmm. and severity was patient was 7 by 10 ma'am mm-hmm. and associated features were associated with vomiting multiple times and whenever food was taken immediately he was uh, vomiting and uh, as this abdominal pain was uh, getting somewhat relieved after every episode of the vomiting is he able to pass stools uh, regarding the stools there is no any history of any constipation or obstipation he was able to pass stools okay okay and also what is the difference between uh, partial obstruction and complete obstruction clinically how will you differentiate uh, in case of complete obstruction uh, the uh, patient won't be able to, to pass, pass platelets uh, pass platelets or stools uh, he mm-hmm. won't be able to pass in complete obstruction mm-hmm. and will bowel sounds heard in intestinal obstruction yes, uh, if there is a mechanical obstruction uh, there can be increased bowel sound whereas if it's a paralytic ileus there can be reduced bowel sound mm-hmm. so you are talking about mechanical obstruction uh, other obstruction is ileus paralytic F- ah. paralytic ileus yes. which is a functional, functional. obstruction okay so uh, what are the differential diagnosis in case of an obstruction if you are suspecting as a obstruction leave this patient yes, and this patient depending mo- on the location we can differentiate if it is a duodenal junction obstruction usually it can be a foreign body or a stenosis of the uh, intestine mm. no? or mm. structure mm. even superior mesenteric artery syndrome can be there if it is a small bowel a lower down it can be because of adhesions into susception or hernias mm. if it is a colon most likely it would be a carcinoma causing the obstruction or volvulus we have to suspect or diverticulosis mm. or any medications mm. especially in elderly people if they are taking any anticholinergic drugs these this uh, these might be the cause or any irritable bowel syndromes so uh, which is a most common uh, cause of intestinal obstruction in small intestine most common cause adhesion uh, most common cause is adhesion adhesion so. so this patient it might be adhesions okay yeah. uh, a most common cause in large bowel obstruction carcinoma carcinoma okay uh, in that itself uh, how will you classify based on the location of the uh, pathology usually by x ray it can be something pushing to the abdomen that is extra luminal mm-hmm. something pushing some mass or any hydroeutronephrosis or some collection which is pushing on to the lumen mm-hmm. or it is can be yeah, like or, colon carcinoma if mm-hmm. it is there inside the lumen ah, then colon ca- colon wall carcinoma then any structures, structures then hematoma of the wall inside the lumen inside the lumen with foreign body the mm. foreign body, body or goldstone goldstone mm-hmm. okay uh, so this uh, patient so this like patient had a past history of surgical, surgical uh, reasons are there and then coming to the examination part uh, this specifically to the gastrointestinal obst- uh, part of the examination patient uh, was having a distended abdomen mm-hmm. with uh, so soft but uh, abdomen was distended and diffuse tenderness was present ma'am mm-hmm. and uh, per rectal also examination was there any guarding rigidity no guarding or no rigidity so diffuse, diffuse ten- abdominal tenderness, tenderness what should we suspected diffuse abdominal when will a patient have diffuse tenderness we Perit- peritonitis and per rectal examination stools were pre- present soft and uh, rectum is collapsing okay okay so after the, after this initial uh, exam can the history we got an x-ray taken ma'am x-ray erect abdomen to see if the obstruction is there there were dilated uh, colon loops mm. uh, but there are no any air fluid levels or there is no gas under diaphragm okay and uh, coming when to when will you tell that colon loops are dilated more than 6 uh, 6 mm, mm it is dilated if it is more than 8 mm we have to suspect uh, perforation or the mm. what about small intestine so you remember it as 369 
more than 3 cm of a small intestine mm. or more than 6 cm of a colon and more than 9 cm of cecum. Mm. If it is dilated, then it can be uh, intestinal obstruction. Mm. Now, after the X-ray, initial X-ray, we continued with the ultrasound imaging. Mm. In the ultrasound imaging, there were a diffuse peritoneal and omental deposits were present in the pelvic region. Uh, like METs were uh, suspecting and the other thing is bowel loops uh, uh, were no, not any, not visualized, not dilated and uh, no any to and fro peristalsis movement identified. Okay, in this patient we were able to see the deposits but otherwise in a routine case of intestinal obstruction, ultrasound abdomen is of no much use, mm -hmm. only we will be able to see some dilated bowel mm -hmm. loops. To confirm uh, or to suspect, we need to take an x-ray. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, coming to the treatment wise, initially as the patient is having vomiting as the complaint and to prevent aspiration, we put in an RT and decompress the, uh, uh, like aspirated the content. Why are you putting RT? Routinely in the style obstruction, what is indication of putting RT? If suppose the patient vomits, you can, aspiration can happen. No, if it is a conscious patient. Safeguard or safety reason? No, RT placement is because there is some obstruction in a place and the rest of the bowel is dilated. Is di uh, dilated. Why it is dilated? Because all the contents food of some food curtains will be there. So, intestinal bacteria are also there. So, this bacteria and this content along with that patient, patient because of the pain and stress patient will be swallowing some air also. All the digestive enzymes and the air will be, accum will be accumulated in this bowel, uh, which is the proximal okay. part of the bowel, along with the bacteria. So, there will be some amount of inflammation and there will be excessive production of these digestive fluids into the abdomen. So, the proximal part will be having more of air and more of the fluids. So, that's why it is getting dilated. Okay. The proximal part will, is getting dilated. And what will happen is sometimes it will get dilated as if um, the, this part, no, the wall will be so much dilated that the it will not get enough blood supply. That blood supply will get cut off. So, this part will go for necrosis and perforation. So, uh, that is why we are putting a rail tube to decompress that one. Okay. Uh, and uh, we put the patient in the NPO mm -hmm. and uh, RT was placed and hydration was started with uh, ringer lactate fluid. Mm -hmm. And also... As Why hydration? Patient does not get food not absorbing the... Ah, uh, along with that, I as in, I told you already. There are lot. Uh, this fluid means the bowel. There are lots of secretions happening inside the bowel. So the body will go into hypovolemia, yeah. hypotension, yes. and all. So we need to give fluids, hydration. hydration. And, and even the electrolytes, if there is any imbalance, to correct the electrolytes and uh, to give uh, prophylactic antibiotic. Uh, mm. My antibiotic again. The same bacterial infection. Same mechanism. Flora, there will be infection. Infection. Okay. The gra so the uh, antibiotic intravenous antibiotic coverage for bowel flora. Mm. Uh, we can in mild to moderate. We can give combination of ciprofloxacin with metronidazole or single antibiotic of ticarcelin clavulinate. Okay. If it is a severe infection, then we can give ampicillin and metronidazole. If ampicillin uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, Anaphylaxis to ampicillin, then we can give gentamicin or ciprofloxacin plus metronidazole plus imipenem. Mm. What is the ideal management in intestinal obstruction? The ultimate management? To lepra, uh, to yeah, surgical, surgical management, man if it is like a, uh, like what are the indications of a surgical management? Uh, ideally, in all cases of intestinal obstruction, our management is NPO, putting a rail tube, IV Hydration. fluids and starting antibiotics. And the most important thing is a surgical gastro consultation or a surgery consultation. Okay. And when all will you plan uh, to take the patient for a surgery, immediate surgery? If there is any perforation or if mm. there is any ischemia of the bowel going on, oh. then only indicated for the surgery or they will go for a conservative management. Uh, and if patient is worsening clinically, clinically. Uh, shock. Uh, shock and all, then we will have to plan on surgical, surgical management. management. Mm. Uh. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what was the cause of this patient's this thing? Adhesions. Adhesions. Uh, any CT, medicine. anything was done? Uh, repeat CT was done the, uh, considering that he was on a regular follow-up and regular CTs were there, ma'am. Mm. The patient uh, 
सीटी रिपोर्ट बेसिकली सेट दैट देर आर मल्टीपल डिस्क्रीट एंड कॉन्ग्लोमेट एनोमेंटल डिपॉजिट्स इन द एबडोमिन एंड पेलविस बट देर आर नो एनी डायलिटेशन ऑफ द बोवल लूप्स एज पर द सीटी फाइंडिंग्स एंड no obstruction so obstruction was not, not there, there. Uh, only uh, metastasis to yeah. the peritoneum was there yeah. okay okay oh, then so, what was done conservatively patient was uh, better was got better within 2 days and he was discharged okay okay mm-hmm. thank you